Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video on using some of the post-processing tools in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical for harmonic response analysis. A harmonic response analysis, the loads are applied and vary harmonically. Likewise, the output quantities like stress also vary harmonically. This means that they have a both a real and imaginary component and they're complex in nature. Furthermore, a harmonic response analysis we typically sweep the loads over a frequency range. This results in many data sets of results. From a user perspective, it's the goal to determine the maximum stress as well as the frequency of excitation in a harmonic response analysis, and this may typically feed a downstream fatigue calculation. So we'll take a look at using some of the post-processing techniques in a harmonic response analysis to determine the maximum stress over all of the result sets, as well as the frequency and phase angle corresponding to the maximum stress. To illustrate this, we'll use this simple model on screen, which is just a mount that's bolted down at these four tabs with some beam connections to a base plate. We have solved a modal analysis up front to get an idea of the dynamic content of the system. This is always a good prerequisite for any dynamic analysis, and it gives us a good snapshot at what the dynamic response may look like. For example, the frequencies of excitation. If we click on the solution folder, we can see the modes that have been extracted, the natural frequencies, and we can click on these to see the corresponding mode shape. We do have symmetric modes. This is a symmetric structure. So we see that we have a first bending mode at approximately 154 Hertz. And our mode three is kind of a breathing or vertical bending mode around 330 Hertz. So knowing this information will be useful as we move into our harmonic response analysis. The loading for this harmonic response analysis is fairly simple. We just simply have a force applied to the inside of this mount, the surface denoted in red, and we're going to sweep this force of 250 pounds in the X direction from zero to 500 Hertz. I am using the clustering option for mode superposition, which is gonna concentrate some solution points around those natural frequencies from the modal analysis. So at the completion of this solution, we do have multiple result sets and the results are complex in nature, as we mentioned. So we have both a real and imaginary component. Oftentimes the user is interested in determining the maximum stress throughout the frequency range and then the corresponding frequency of that maximum stress. A conventional approach to determining the maximum stress is to first start by looking at a frequency response plot. A frequency response plot allows us to pick a single scalar quantity. In this case, I'm scoping this result to a face and asking for the maximum deformation in the X direction. So note that this is only one particular direction of excitation. It doesn't give us a complete snapshot of the total state um, of stress or some output quantity in the model. You know, typically von Mises stress is a quantity of interest. So while this is useful to give us an idea of what's happening in a particular direction, it doesn't paint the complete picture of the maximum location of a particular result. It's also just a single value scope to a single face. So the frequency response can give us some information as to where we may expect to have amplification but it doesn't help us to narrow down and identify the location of maximum stress. Now, if we think back to the modal analysis, we know that we have a natural frequency at around 154 Hertz. So one thing we could do is insert an equivalent stress result at that frequency. And if we do that, we see that we have a maximum stress of 3820. <clears throat> so just under four KSI maximum stress. Now recall that these results are complex in nature. So when we insert a result, we specify a frequency of excitation, and we also specify a phase angle. The phase angle can be anywhere from zero to 180 degrees. Now the max stress is likely not going to occur at zero degrees. So we have, as a user, we need to determine what is that sweeping phase. So kind of the, what I'll call the silver bullet or a really useful and powerful post-processing tool inside Workbench Mechanical is to scope. When you're using a stress result, you can scope to the maximum over frequency. 
So if we select this drop down, we expose some, some different options. Uh, we can insert stresses by frequency, by result set, maximum over frequency, the frequency corresponding to the maximum stress, the maximum over a phase angle, or the phase corresponding to the maximum stress. So if we use maximum over frequency, what the software does is at every frequency, it scans the model and determines the maximum stress for each individual node. We would also want to toggle on the amplitude switch. The amplitude is doing a square root sum of the squares of the real and imaginary component. This foregoes the user having to determine the phase angle corresponding to the maximum stress. So by using the maximum over frequency with an amplitude set to yes, we are going to get the maximum stress that would occur at every nodal location throughout the entire phase and frequency response of the system. So we can see here in this example that the maximum stress is just slightly over 26 KSI. Now let's go back to just probing at 154 Hertz with a phase angle of zero. We saw here that the maximum stress was around four KSI. So obviously there is a significant difference um, in the output by using the maximum over frequency with an amplitude option because we've captured the, the appropriate phase angle. Let's take a look at some of the other tools to kind of complete this picture. The frequency of maximum, this model is fairly simple, so we know that the dominant driving frequency is, a, is 154 hertz by looking at our frequency response plots as well as our modal analysis based on the type and the direction of load that we're applying. However, for more complex structures, this may not be all that clear. We may have multiple frequencies that are being excited, and it may not be all that clear what frequency value corresponds to the max. So the frequency over max allows the user, very similar to the maximum over frequency amplitude result, this is going to spit back to the user the frequency corresponding to that stress. So if we look at our maximum stress location and we kind of zoom in here, this is all the same color, but if we probe we see that we're at roughly 154 hertz. And that makes sense based on our modal results. Furthermore, we may also want to know what the phase angle is of that maximum stress. So again, we put in a result. This is phase over max. Here, we know that the frequency of interest at that location is 154 hertz. And I'm going to scan every one degree through that 180 degree phase angle. And if we use our probe tool again here, we can see that the maximum stress in this location is around 85 hertz. Now, knowing that information of maximum stress occurring at 154 hertz and a phase angle of 85 degrees, we can also insert a result, you know, directly scope to that result set of 154 hertz at a phase angle of 85 degrees. And here we see that we have a stress of 26.1 KSI, which is almost identical to the maximum over frequency amplitude stress output. However, that's done automatically without the user having to determine the frequency and the phase angle. So in summary, harmonic response analyses generate a lot of result sets. The results are complex in nature and span multiple frequencies. Using the maximum over frequency with the amplitude option set to yes ensures that we've extracted the maximum nodal stress at every location in the model. We can further use some of the tools to determine the frequency of that maximum stress as well as the phase angle. All of these results can also be exported to Excel and we can sort um, by maximum stress to determine the frequency and phase angle. And that's been done by exporting all three of those result sets and combining them together. And we can see here that node 150570 with a maximum stress of 26.1 KSI has a frequency of excitation of a run, roughly 154 hertz at a phase angle of 85 degrees. And this is, this is uh, what was used to generate this particular result. So I hope you found this tips and tricks video useful on using some of the harmonic response post-processing tools to determine the maximum stress, frequency, and phase angle. Thank you for watching.